I, I did <laughs> mention that having got the silly one out of the way, I'm going to revert back to uh, storyteller mode and do the serious one now, mostly. Um, one of the uh, previous circles here is this event. I told the story of a man named Ivan the Younger who tempted the fates and uh, sort of came out second best on this. And I mentioned at the time, yes, there was an Ivan the Elder. And this is his story. <clears throat> Ivan the Elder was a king of Moldavia. And he was one of those kings who spared no effort or expense in constantly displaying the degree of control, <coughs> the degree to which he controlled his subjects. And to this end, he decided to build a great number of cages out in his garden. And he ordered hunters and trappers to go out and gather up one of each animal one of everything that lived in his kingdom, so that when visitors came, he could tour them through the garden and show them that he was king not only of his people, but of every creature in his kingdom. And over time, this was done with one exception, and that one exception was the fairies. Now, the fairies were these little winged folk who lived in and out of the woods, mostly in, presented themselves to children more than adults, but everybody knew they were there. But despite the best efforts of all of his hunters and his trappers, no one could catch a fairy for him. And this enraged him more and more. <clears throat> Eventually, Ivan sent off the faraway lands of Egypt and brought from there a well-known sorcerer who showed up with spells and potions and all manner of strange objects. And the sorcerer set to work and created a very special cage imbued with certain unguents and certain spells. And he set it in the woods. And sure enough, within a few days, he caught two little fairies in his cage and presented them to the king, put them out in his garden on display. And the fairy spoke to him, saying, Great king, please do not deprive us of our freedom. Our freedom is our life. You must let us go. And the king only sneered and said, You are my subject like everything else. You will do as I tell you. You will stay here and display yourself to everyone that I bring through my garden. Well, this went on for several days. And each day when the king went past, the fairies would beseech him to let them go because without our freedom, we are nothing. We could very well die. And the king simply shrugged and said, if that's the case, I'll have you replaced. Now stop bothering me. Well, days went past, four days, and then five, and on the sixth day, he walked out into the garden, and the cage was empty. <laughs> and no sooner had he had noticed this surprise, when one of his counselors came running up to him and said, my Lord King, your two sons, Piotr and Ivan, we could not find them anywhere this morning. And soon he heard from other members of his court whose children had apparently also disappeared. And all that day from all about the kingdom, reports came in. And by the end of the day, Ivan realized that every child within his kingdom had vanished that morning without a trace. And as he sat, <clears throat> as he sat in, in his chambers that evening as the sun went down, he heard a slight noise. 
And when he looked up, there sitting in the window were the two little fairies. And he looked up at them and said, you, you did this to me, didn't you? And they said, not at all. We have come here to deliver to you a message from our queen. She says to tell you that since you chose to deprive us of what we value most, we shall teach you a lesson and take away what you value most. Now, our queen is not without compassion. So her decree is this. One evening each month, on the night of the full moon, your, ch your children will be returned to you at sunset. But when the sun rises, we will take them back again, and they will be gone for another month. That is the message from our queen. And with that, they disappeared. Well, sure enough, some days later it was the night of the full moon, and as the sun set, every child in the kingdom suddenly reappeared exactly where they had disappeared from. They seemed to be in good health. They had no memory of where they were, what they had been doing. And as predicted, as foretold, as the sun rose, they suddenly vanished. And this went on the next month, and the month to follow, and the month after that. The parents reacted in different ways. Some of them simply held their children close. It didn't help. Some of them tied them to their beds or locked them in their rooms. This did nothing. Those who could afford it sent their children on coaches or fast horses as far away as they could even across the border to neighboring kingdoms. This did not help either. For no matter where they were, always when the sun rose after the night of the full moon, every child in the kingdom vanished without a trace. Now, Ivan was constantly beseeched by his subjects to do something about this and found himself powerless to do anything. He beseeched his Egyptian sorcery to do something, but the sorcery discovered that no matter what he did, all it did was give him a blinding headache and create some very bad smells. Where apparently the fairies had done something to his magic as well. And then came the day when the old king felt very sick. Now, the king's food taster was a man who held great stock in his fealty to his, his liege lord. But on the other hand, he did have a daughter who he loved greatly and missed very much, so perhaps you could draw your own conclusions. And as the old king lay in his bed, dying, surrounded by the members of his court, he drew a ragged breath, followed by another, and as he was breathing his last breaths, there was a glow that suddenly occurred in the room. And there, abruptly, at the foot of his bed, sat, another, sat none other than Titania, queen of the fairy folk. And she looked down at the dying king with an expression that can only be described as patient sadness. And the old man drew one last breath, and he breathed no more. And Titania looked down upon him <clears throat> for a long moment, and then turned to those assembled with eyes of emerald flame. She spoke no words aloud, but yet everyone there assembled heard her message as if it had been shouted in their ears. You foolish mortals, you who think that you rule all that you see and own everything that you touch, know by this that you share this land with peoples and powers far older and, and far greater than you could possibly imagine. We do not have to be friends to share this land. But if by your actions, 
you declare it your enemies, you do so at your own great peril. And with that, the light faded from her eyes, and upon her lips was perhaps the faintest smile, and in an instant she was gone. And at that very same instant, every child in the kingdom reappeared. Now, the old king shortly thereafter was buried, and Piotr, the eldest son, was raised up and crowned the new king. As one of his first acts from the throne, he ordered that all the cages out in the garden be opened and all the creatures therein be set free. And from that day on, there was no further disagreement between the people and the fairy folk. And that is the story of Ivan the Elder.